You grew some beautiful squash in your garden last year. They stored in your pantry all winter and provided many delicious meals. But now it's spring and your squash are starting to show their age. They're not gonna store very much longer, but you're sick and tired of the meals you've been doing all winter and you wanna do something a little bit different with your remaining squash. Have you ever tried fermenting winter squash? It's a little bit weird, but I promise it's actually really tasty. And today I'm gonna to share a fermented squash and curry chutney recipe. So why fermented foods? Well, one, it's a great way to prolong the storage life of whatever you're fermenting. And secondly, it's also a great way to add nutrition to your food and or break down anti-nutrients depending on what you're fermenting. It's kind of like yogurt as far as good gut bacteria goes. It can be really great as a digestive aid and help you build a stronger gut. Step one is to prep your squash. If it's a variety that has a thin edible skin and you like that, go for it, leave it on, just wash it and deseed it. If it has a tough outer skin as most storage varieties do, you're gonna want to go ahead and peel it and then cut it in half and remove the seeds. You can either chop it up, dice it, or you can shred it just depending on the kind of finished texture that you'd like. Step number two, we're gonna make a brine. Making a quart today, so we're going to use one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of yellow curry powder, and just under a pint of water. It's important to use non-chlorinated water when you're making ferments. It's also important to use a salt that doesn't have any anti-caking agents or added iodine. Those things will both inhibit the ferment and can produce really funky flavors or an entirely failed ferment. So just keep that in mind when you're sourcing your ingredients. I use a Himalayan pink sea salt from Azure Standard. I buy it in bulk and use it for fermenting, canning, cooking, pickling, and even meat curing. This is a little bit different than how I usually approach ferments. When you're making sauerkraut and most things, you're gonna shred up your veggies and sprinkle the salt right on top and let that salt pull out the natural moisture from the vegetables. But since I'm using kind of at the end of their lifespan squash here, they've lost a lot of their natural moisture content already. They just don't have very much to give. That's why I'm kind of going with this brine approach. If you're using squash that is fresh or a variety that has a really high water content, you could probably just sprinkle the salt on top of the freshly diced or grated squash and see how much juice that naturally releases. You need at least enough that all of the fruit is covered in whatever jar you're using to make your ferment. So that's open to play with that a little bit. Step number three, go ahead and add your shredded or diced squash and one fourth cup of raisins to your brine. Then you're going to want to put some kind of little weight on it and a fermentation top. The reason you use a weight is to keep all of the fruit or veggies or whatever you're fermenting below the brine at all times. This keeps everything safe while it's fermenting. If you have things that are floating above the surface of your brine, you can run into problems with mold and spoilage and nobody wants that. So a little pickle weight like this comes in really handy. There's a lot of different options for fermenting tops. I really like these mason top pickle pipes because they are just really, really low tech. They're a super simple solution. There's not a lot of moving pieces. They're easy to wash and reuse. It's my favorite. It sits on the top of the jar. This little tiny vent at the top lets gases come out, but it doesn't let anything back in. But you're not dealing with a water lock or anything complicated like that. So these are my top pick for fermentation lids, but if you have something else that you are already using, definitely just use that. And if you're new and starting out and you don't want to invest in a fermentation top, you can use a regular lid, but you're going to need to gently open the lid every day, maybe even twice a day, to burp your jar and release some of those gases so you don't end up with a fermentation explosion. Step number four, you need just a little bit of patience. Take your ferment, set it somewhere, room temperature around 70, 75 degrees is perfect. And you're going to want to let it just do its thing for at least four days, up to two weeks. Now, what I like to do is around day four or five, I start tasting it. And then once it hits the flavor and the texture that I really like, I move it into cold storage. 
So for me, right now that's a refrigerator, but you could also use a cold basement, cellar, other kind of cold situation, somewhere under 60 degrees, probably 45 to 50 degrees is the best because that cold temperature really slows down and kind of halts your ferment at this stage. Once your ferment is in cold storage, it can last for many, many months. So enjoy. It still has a little bit of crunch. It's sweet and savory. It's really fun. I think this would be good on anything from a cheese board to a hamburger. Definitely a really fun, different way to use some pumpkin. Well, this was a really fun, very different project. I enjoyed it. It's kind of a sweet and sour pumpkin pickle relishy situation. If you wanna see more fermented foods, make sure you check out my whole playlist on fermented foods and let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.